Welcome to the UGC EPG Patshala lecture series in computer science. In this series of lectures, we have been looking at the paper software engineering. For today's session, I will be discussing on one of the software testing methodology, say white box testing. So, the learning objectives associated for this session include, we will initially try to focus on the internal program structure. So, as we have discussed in the black box testing in the previous session, black box testing explained or detailed more on the functionality of a program. So, before writing a program by understanding the functionality or the behavior, we were able to write some test cases and we were able to do the testing. So, that was a black box test, but here we will look at the internal program structure and discover all the program errors in detail. So, the second objective of this particular session is to focus on the program structures, internal logic and data structure associated and the behavior of the program and the various states associated when we are doing the programming. So, we will start with the definition of white box testing initially. This white box testing is based on the analysis of internal logic. So, the logic associated with the software development life cycle starts from the design, then it gets on to the coding aspects and further it will be continued like that. So, but then for some expected results, it still comes from requirements. So, there will be logic associated even with the requirements, but then more of the logic will be associated as component of a design and code. So, I will be looking at the program's internal logic for understanding more on the white box testing. So, this white box testing is also known as a structural testing since it looks for the structure of the programming. For every line of code, we are going to convert that into a graph and understand the complexity of the metric. So, that is the major issue that we will be tending to do on a white box testing. So, white box testing majorly concerns on techniques for designing various tests and it is not a single level of test, it is the lower level of a test where it is to talk on units and components. So, as part of the white box testing, we will be focusing on the structure of the program. That means, for every statement that is associated with the program and the branches, we will also try to understand the different paths associated with the program starting from identification of individual paths, then we will tend to prolong further. We also have an internal logic of a program and data structure associated and we study on the behavior of the program and the different states associated for a program. So, as part of white box testing, we will do a logic coverage, data flow coverage, path condition and sim symbolic evaluation and most of the white box testing strategies may it be a fault based testing. So, what does this logic of a program talk about? So, whenever I am to concentrate on the logic of coverage for a particular program, I will be initially looking at every line of code I write. Every line of code is supposed to be the statement which I generate. So, each statement I ensure that every statement is being executed at least once. So, that is the kind of coverage that I am trying to provide with the statement level. And if you go for the branch level where every branch that is being traversed will have an entry point taken and for every entry point the traversal has to have happened at least once. I will also have a condition where each condition needs to be true at least once that also to, should be checked. So, that means if I have a condition associated, I should have checked for its true clause and also for its false class. I will also have to check for both the condition and the branch which in case exist. So, these are the preliminary logic coverage that I am tending to do. Not only that, at certain times I may have combination or it might also look like a compound condition where all possible combination values at every branch 
whether it has been covered or not will also be checked and finally, I will intend to see I have travel whether we have traversed through all the paths. So, all program paths should have been traversed at least once is the path identification. So, with respect to white box testing, we will have a test model which generates a control program chart or it also tries to generate a graph. But with the help of a graph, we will try to understand the complexity of the programming and the metrics associated in terms of writing up the number of test cases can also be identified. With that, I will plan for the test case design. So, with this design, I will be able to understand the various white box testing methods, generate test cases based on a given control program graph for a program. So, the goal associated with this white box testing is to guarantee we assure or we guarantee that the independent paths after or from the statement to a graph conversion, all the independent paths within a module have been exercised or traversed at least once. The second thing that we may have to consider is we may have to exercise on all logical decisions whether it is true or false at least once. So, all the conditions that we have presented here should have been exercised with a minimum criteria of 1 that is it should have been done at least once then so as to ensure that the testing is done full fledged. So, once this testing is done in full that means we are trying to assure the quality of the product. So, we will recall from the definitions that we had when we defined software engineering. Software engineering majorly talked about ensuring on better programming, fixing up the schedule, fixing the cost and ensuring quality product. So, for ensuring on the quality of the product, we are supposed to do these as individual tasks. So, we may have to execute all loops at their boundaries and within their operational bounds. So, any number of loops that is associated at least we should have traversed through that particular loop once. We also try to exercise internal data structure to assure their validity. So, to check for their validity of the data, the data structure also has to be looked into and finally, we tend to define all data and the use case paths. So, with respect to this white box software testing, we have various methods. To start with, we will have to initially do a basis path testing, which is one of the technique associated with the white box testing. So, this testing technique is being proposed by Tom McCabe in the year 76. This can be used to derive a logical complexity measure for a procedural design and this acts as a guide for defining a basic set of execution path. We will try identifying the different paths that takes you from the input to the output and we understand defining the basic paths of execution. And not only that, here we have to guarantee that every statement in the program has been executed at least once. So, before getting on to understanding the different complexities or plotting out the basis path, we may have to do branch wise testing, loop based testing and state based testing. So, if you understand on branch testing where every node from where one or more activity emerge or one or more activity move out that is supposed to be called a branch where we exercise predicate nodes of a program flow graph to make sure each predicate node has been exercised at least once. So, if I consider a node and there exist two branches which are moving out, then the node is called a predicate node and we have to ensure that 
I check for both the conditions at least once. The second thing we may have to look at is the looping. Exercise loops of a program to make sure that the inside and outside loop body are executed at least once again. Means if I am to write a program with if else, if else the condition is true I will come through this path, if else the condition is false I will go for the other path. So that means we have formed a loop and we may have to exercise our practices for one inside the loop and one outside the loop also. So every time when we execute we are supposed to do it both for the internal loop and for the external loop also. And third method which we do it as part of basis path testing is a state based testing where the basic idea is to draw a finite state machine as a test model which checks the state's behavior of a program process. Whenever we tend to draw a basis path testing method whereby we will understand the different paths associated with a particular problem, we calculate one of the metric which is called cyclomatic complexity metric. We understand the complexity of the programming that we have already done. So cyclomatic complexity is a software metric that gives us an intention of understanding the quantitative measure of a global complexity of a program. When this metric is being used, the context of the basis path testing, the value computed for cyclomatic complexity defines the number of independent paths in the basis set of a program. We will tend to understand how we are to measure the software complexity. The complexity of any software is difficult to understand when it is in operation. So operationalize complexity is difficult when it comes to understanding the software complexity. So then it is mandatory to measure the software complexity. To understand any complexities may it be time complexity or space complexity, every complexity level is being represented with a big O notation and for the similar case with the computational complexity we have big O notation which is indicated here. This computational complexity is just a measure of machine's viewpoint in terms of how the size of the input data affects an algorithm's usage of computational resources. Anything which has been represented in big O is just a machine's viewpoint and with the help of big O notation we will be able to identify or we will be able to understand the size of the input data whether the size of the data will affect the algorithm's usage of computational resources. This, so this is the understanding we will get when we do a big O notation. Complexity measure in software engineering should measure complexity from the viewpoint of human developers. So when we understand on the cyclomatic complexity, we understand it differently. It is not from the machine's viewpoint, it is the understanding which we get it from human developers. So computer time may be cheap whereas human time is expensive. So the amount of time that I spend to compute the error or the number of paths initially is massive when compared to the computer which computes the complexity again. As I have indicated the entire of complexity measure which is represented here is being invented by Thomas Macap to measure the complexity of the program's conditional logic. So this complexity measure counts on the number of decisions in the program. Every program might have to take a decision. So we may have to understand how many decisions exist in a program given an assumption of the decisions that are difficult for people to understand. So we can make as many assumptions as possible about decision counting on the rules and its linear dependence of the total count to the complexity. Certainly for an example, cyclomatics complexity of a graph G equals number of nodes minus number of edges, sorry number of edges minus number of nodes plus 2. That is to understand 
v represents the complexity of a given graph. So, v of g which says the complexity of the given graph is equal to total number of edges that is present in the graph minus the number of nodes connecting the edges plus 2. So, this also corresponds to the number of linearly independent paths in a program. So, we will try to understand what this linear independence means. Let us just have a look of a flow graph or a control flow diagram which we have been talking about. So, we are to understand on the cyclomatic complexity in detail for which we may have to draw a flow graph. So, when I say this as a node, this node has got two edges, one which comes inside and one which moves outside. So, this becomes a sequential statement block. So, any number of nodes that I create, if it takes one input and leaves out one output or leave, leaves out one other edge, then it becomes a sequential block. Same is not the case here, where I have got one edge, but then I am to take a decision. So, two edges emerge out of a single node. So, in that particular case, this node becomes a predicate node. So, what are the instances? You can recall from the programming language that you have learnt. What are the instances in which you have understood two edges which are emerging out of a single node? It could be use of if then statement. If check for the condition C, then S1, else S2 and we continue doing the program. If you understand it clean keenly on this graph that we have presented, all the lines with an arrow head indicates the edges and this circle indicates the node. I said the node C which we have presented here as a predicate node since two edges emerge out of this single node. So, if you look at this case S1 where one of the edges comes inside the other edge moves out. So, this cannot be a predicate node. Similar is the case for S2 where one edge enters in the other edge moves out. So, this can also not be a predicate node. You take this node where you get two inputs from the outside world and you get you give away one output. So, this can also cannot be a predicate node. So, number of predicate node associated with this particular graph is only one and this has got how many edges? Say this is one edge, two, three, four, five, six edges we have. We have four nodes. So, as per the formula that we have indicated to understand on the cyclomatic complexity where that has been arrived using edges and nodes e minus n plus 2. So, number of edges that we have presented here is 6 minus number of nodes is 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4 again. So, the complexity of this particular loop is 4. Likewise, we can consider this for many cases. This is one of the case where we could use a switch statement. So, given a condition, we can switch between statements and we can finally arrive at a conclusion. This is a looping statement where it is a condition for if then alone. Previously, we have executed for if then else. Now, it is for if then alone. If the condition is true, then we may have to execute S1. If not, I will go directly to the other part. So, likewise, for different looping conditions, we make we can draw this graph. So, this is just an initiation of how to draw a graph given different looping statements. So, for this graph, we represent while C do S and we also check for a true condition, we also check for a false condition. And this is the control flow graph for a for loop statement, where if I have written for i is equal to 1 to n do S, which means for every i value, I may have to execute s. Yes. If it is s, yes, then I will go back again, fetch in the second value, I will execute the statement until the number is known or until the condition is satisfied. This is one of the last looping statement where we consider do loop also, do s1 until 
we do we get a true value for c. So, s 1 should be executed until the condition c should be true enough. So, those were the different looping statements that we have seen, but then this should be incorporated as part of the programming that we tend to do. So, taking it there will not be only looping statements associated with the program before that there will be set of statements and after that there can be set of statements. So, we may have to understand the actual complexity of the overall program not the program which has only loops alone. So, this cyclomatic complexity or it can also be said as a graph complexity where if you understand the complete flow if you assume the flow is something like this if at all we have to compute the cyclomatic complexity with a simple formulae cyclomatic complexity is the number of simple decisions. So, number of decision boxes which are associated in the control graph or uh, control flow graph or graph. So, the number of simple decisions plus 1 or number of enclosed areas number of closed areas plus 1. So, in this case the complexity of the given graph is 4 it is because two ways of identifying one is I have three decision boxes here 1, 2 and 3. So, number of simple decisions is 3 plus 1. So, I get a complexity graph as value as 4 and in the second case if I have to look at I have got three enclosed areas area 1, area 2 and area 3. So, the complexity associated with this graph again is 3 plus 1 which is 4. So, the computational complexity of the graph complexity converting from the code to a flow chart to a graph. So, if you look for the condition A where I will explain an expression if expression 1 then statement 2 else statement 3 and if statement 4 which means I am trying to convert this into a flow graph initially to understand it better where for an expression 1 I execute statement 2 in case if it is true, I execute statement 3 if it is false and finally, after terminating on the loop I will go for statement 4. So, this flow chart can easily be converted into a graph which we have already seen. Every expressions or every statement in this particular flow chart is being rep replaced with a node. So, I get totally 4 nodes here and it is again connected with edges. So, from n 1 we get an edge which connects it to the n 2 and from n 1 we get an another edge which connects it to n 3. So, here if you take it back for a strong connected graph we can also create a virtual edge to connect the n node to the beginning node. So, this can be a virtual edge which can take it as a loop until this loop is getting satisfied. Likewise, for a statement of switch type we can in turn write if this has got 3 switch cases I am generating 3 nodes which is emerging from a single node and after the end switch I execute a specific statement which becomes another node. And similarly for a do type I execute a statement. So, do while I have a statement 3. So, similar way I can very easily convert like a flow chart I can generate as many graphs as possible with the graphs I will be able to compute the cyclomatic complexity with the help of cyclomatic complexity I will be able to easily identify the number of test cases or the number of independent paths through which I am traversing through and further I will be able to understand the complexity associated with the problem thereby I can understand the error the volume of error associated with the program again. As a summary in this particular session we have started looking at the second way of doing testing is by white box testing. So, this white box testing is also called a structure testing where we understand the internal portions of the testing. So, in connection with the black box testing if we compare black box testing looks at the functionality of the program whereas, white box testing looks at the structure of the program. So, further we have also understood on the goals associated with the white box testing by looking at if at all we convert this given programming we convert the programming into a graph structure and every 
line of code should have been traversed through at least once is the basic testing that we do. And further for this particular session I have taken you with a basis path testing which is the first technique that we have understood in which I have mentioned you about statement coverage, branch coverage and state based testing. And further we have also started with looking at the complexity of the software project or the software program which is measured in this testing as a cyclomatic complexity which is measured using two formulae one is after converting the statement of program into a graph or control flow diagram we understand the complexity of the graph as in terms of number of edges and nodes as e minus n plus 2 or if we look for the number of decisions associated with the graph then it is number of simple decisions plus 1 thank you